Hello, so um, here I am. Uh, this is me, basically, you see I have a uh, kneaded eraser. I drew in the pencil lines to start with, um, and then I grabbed the kneaded eraser to go in and just kind of lighten up the lines a little bit. Obviously not fully erase the lines because I need those to be able to see what I'm coloring in with the Copic markers, but I'm um, just lighten it up a little bit so they don't show through too bad um, or at all. And now I've got my first color that I'm adding. I believe this is an E35 um, color, but as I go, you see right there, I kind of run out of ink. So I had to cut out a little bit go and go in and uh, refill that marker. But here I am back at it again, um, same color. Uh, it might look a little darker, but that's only because I'm overlaying the color I had originally laid down with the same color to kind of saturate the paper a little bit more with that color. Um, and then I'm going in and doing the pupil with a darker color. I believe that was C8, um, cold gray 8. Uh, I don't ever do the pupil fully black um, because there's more color in a pupil than just black. I kind of start with a dark color uh, and then just add to it from there as I go. And you'll see in this video that I do that. I, I keep going back and coloring in the, the pupil with darker shades or different kind of tones or, or, or whatever just to get it a little bit more than just plain black. Um, I also did the outlines around the eye, the eyelids, um, with a darker color. And now I'm going in to do some detail with um, in the eyeball itself, in the iris because uh, the iris is not just one color. Um, it might seem like that sometimes, but if you look really closely at one, they're not. There's lots of shades uh, typically in an iris. So uh, in this case, I went in with some darker browns, um, some more warm gray tones, even some cold gray tones I think I put in there um, just to get some of those different kind of uh, variations in the iris color. Um, and again, right there, you just saw I colored in the pupil uh, with a darker or with a different shade and here I go again doing it again um, just to get the pupil right uh, and you can see the detail in the iris um, kind of um, jutting out from the pupil a little bit just to so it looks like a real iris uh, again an iris is not just one shade right here what I'm doing is I, I have a very light tone marker. Um, I believe that was a W00. A lot of people will do this with a uh, uh, colorless blender, but I'll, I tend to use just a light tone of a marker. What I was doing is I was uh, making the iris uh, a little bit lighter. I was desaturating the color a little bit with the lighter tone. Um, with alcohol ink, you can do that. It just, uh, and you can see right there, it gave it a little bit more of a 3D effect. Also a little bit of texture there in the iris. And then I went in with uh, a uh, pencil, a mechanical pencil that I have HB lead in to go and put in even further details. So with that, you can see it's not just 100% Copic marker I'm using here. I'm using other tools as well, and you'll see more of those in just a second. But um, they, uh, I put in the details with the HB lead, um, kind of smoothed it out with my finger a little bit so it's not so obvious that it's pencil, but it just added more depth to the eye, uh, to the iris, more detail, more texture, um, and again, uh, as I go, I'm putting more uh, darker shades in for the uh, over the eyes, the eyelids. Right here, I'm putting some shadow from the eyelids onto the eyeball itself. Uh, and now I'm coloring in the white of the eye with uh, some pink, some cool grays. Um, the white of the eye is not actually white. Uh, it's kind of we just kind of think that it is, but it's not. It's there's lots of colors in the white of the eye, um, and not to mention the shadows that come from the eyelid above that give it a little bit of depth that you just saw me color in right there. Um, you'll see me as I go, I do kind of go back in over other colors that I've done, um, just to kind of maybe saturate them more, desaturate them a little with lighter tones, whatever, um, maybe just to blend them a little bit more, give them more of that realistic effect. Um, and now I am putting in some white kind of details, the reflections in the eye, the reflections on the eyelids, um, using some they're called gel jelly rolls. Uh, they're just gel pens. Um, this is a uh, another pen that uses some. I think it's a, I think it's actually acrylic, uh, but it's just as you can see, it's opaque. So it's it's covering up any of the colors that I put in with the Copic markers and putting in the white reflections on the eye. Um, and now I'm using a white charcoal pencil. Uh, again, further details. I'm blending it a little bit with my finger, um, kind of 
softening up those white edges on the reflections a little bit right there. Um, putting some more right, white reflections around in the iris just to give it, again, more texture, more detail. I'm kind of going around in different areas and doing that with the different tools that I have. Um, and now um, heading into some details on the eyelids themselves. Uh, I'm not going to draw an entire dog head here. I'm just doing the eye, but I wanted to get the skin kind of around the eye, around the eyelid, um, and try and capture the texture of that. Uh, and also some of the hair uh, follicles that'll be sticking out from that uh, those skin areas. Uh, in a second, you'll see as I uh, put in the skin around the eye, well, actually, I'll get to that in a second. What I'm doing right now is the hairs, um, obviously. And I'm doing a technique called feathering, um, something that you can do really well. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice, but once you figure it out, and it works really good with Copic markers, um, especially with the brush nib. Um, you're starting thick and you're kind of whipping your wrist out and, and going thin with it. Um, I wanted to make it in the pattern that real hairs would be going in, obviously. And so that's why they're going in that pattern. And I'm putting shade in, shading in on a, some of the hair follicles to give them a little bit of depth. Um, and I'm doing several different colors too. The hairs on an animal, even on our heads are not all exactly the same color. There's going to be lighter ones. There's going to be darker ones. There's going to be gray ones. There's going to be all kinds of ones. So that's what I did there. Um, now I'm putting the skin in around the eye. You can see I'm just going in with one simple color, uh, a kind of a lighter brownish color. Um, I don't remember what uh, Copic that was, but uh, in any case, then I'm going in with a darker tone, putting in some shades around the eyelids, giving it a little bit more depth, making it pop a little more. Um, in a second, you'll see me putting texture on that skin right here. I, I have a darker tone and I'm putting some texture in uh, on the skin. Uh, again, skin is not s totally smooth. There's, If you look at skin closely on a dog or on a human or whatever, there's going to be a lot of texture there. Uh, and texture with texture comes shadows. So I'm adding in shadows on um, a lot of the, the skin texture there. Uh, and I go in a little bit more with a lighter tone marker over some of those texture dots I put in there just to smooth them down a little bit, desaturate them a little bit. Um, going back in with some hairs around the eye, um, and I'm just going around the entire eye. Uh, I'm very deliberate with where I'm putting those hairs. I'm not just kind of randomly throwing them in there. I'm putting them where the hair follicles would actually be. So the hairs are starting where the hair follicles on the skin are. Um, and just as I did with the hairs above the eye, I'm going in with different colors and different tones on these hairs below the eyeball. Um, it's obviously a brown dog, so many of the hairs are gonna be brown. Uh, and the hairs have depth to them. There's gonna be some that are behind others, and so they're gonna be darker. So I went in and just added some shadows there with some darker, uh, I believe some warm grays. Here, I'm going back in with a gel pen um, basically just stippling in uh, white dots for where the light would be reflecting off of that skin texture. Um, like I mentioned before, the lower eyelid kind of pops out a little bit, and if I want it to pop out a little bit like this, I want to get pretty heavy uh, light reflections going there. So that's what that is. Um, this is this is how it is. Uh, that's, that's everything. Um, except for some last minute details here uh, with some charcoal pencil. I use charcoal pencil just because it's not quite as harsh as using the gel pens, but it still gives a little bit more depth, a little bit more subtle lighting reflections off of uh, skin and even off of hairs. Uh, I think in a second you'll see me go in and, and uh, with some white gel pens and also some of the uh, charcoal pencil and kind of highlight some of those hairs, uh, the light reflecting off of each hair. We're zoomed in real close here, so you're gonna be able to see the, the light details reflecting off the hairs. And so that's what I'm doing here. Um, that about wraps this up. I This whole thing took me about probably somewhere between 45 minutes and 55 minutes to do. Um, so obviously I've zoomed it, sped it up quite a bit here just for this uh, tutorial, but hopefully, uh, pretty clear what I did and hopefully this was informative and if you have any questions about this or, or want to know more 
definitely let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.